My dad is trying to steal my $50,000 inheritance and give it to my stepsister. I refuse to pay for her college. Am I the asshole? You can't have the 50K, but I will give you something else. A sexual favor. Steph says. Okay, so this is kind of awkward to be typing, but here it goes. I, 17 female, have a college fund started by my grandparents, maternal and paternal, with some of the money coming from my parents. The fund was originally for me and my sister, but my mom and sister died four years ago. Oh, sorry to hear that, OP. That sucks. And my grandparents, who hold the account, chose to leave it all for me and continued paying into it. My dad remarried 18 months after my mom and sister died, and he has a stepdaughter who is the same age as my sister would be if she were alive. 18 months, respectful time to continue f***ing after your wife died. <laughs> She's a high school senior now, and talk has turned to her going to college. Her mom was single until she married my dad and never had the opportunity to start a fund before. They have something saved, but it's not enough and won't be. So my dad asked me to share mine with her. Oh. He said it was always intended to be for two people, and my sister would want her money to be used by someone in the family. Well, how about her literal sister? She's dead. <laughs> I'm I told him it was being used by someone in the family. Family. Me. Yeah. Her sister. And he replied that stepsister is our sister too. I told him, no, I only have one sister and she's dead. This is how I feel. I know people will give me shit for it, but I only have one sibling and that's how it will always be. That's not personal against my stepsister, but we're not sisters or even family beyond her mom being married to my dad. My dad said he was telling me I need to share the money. I told him. Good. He went to my grandparents, his parents, and they said it was for me since my sister could no longer use it. He went to my maternal grandparents then because they were the two who originally set up the account and they told him they have no obligation to fund my stepsister going to college because she isn't their granddaughter. He's back trying to force me to say yes. His wife and daughter are also telling me it's the right thing to do and it's what we do for family and my sister would want me to do, which pisses me off because they never met my sister, let alone know what she would want. Am I the asshole? There is an update. Oh man, I hope something bad happens to the dad and sister and the mom because just what, like like die like the sister. Not and like that, wife. but you know, like you really want more tragedy to befall this family. They just piss me off so much. This is just a classic example of dad marry someone new, which hey, great for him. And that box go crazy. <laughs> now he's completely over prioritizing his new wife and her daughter over his own freaking daughter. Hey everyone, this got way more attention than I was expecting. And so I'm going to post a response to some stuff here because I don't know how to reply to every specific question asked individually. I don't worry that my dad will get his hands on the money. I'm not going to be forced into this and I will be gone before I have access to the money. This has already hurt my relationship with my dad. I'm not really sure there will be one in a year. I'll be 18 and can live my own life and get some peace from all this. I'll finish high school at my grandparents probably since that's where I plan to move once I can leave this house. It makes me sad, but I lost so much already. I'm going to be okay. It will just take time. So it sounds like this is like ruining the relationship. With yeah. Father. People have talked about his marrying again 18 months later, and I know there has been debate about this. I didn't pay much attention to this in my original post because I knew I would get for voicing how I felt, but it sucked. He has handled everything in the worst possible way, and I hold some resentment toward him for it. I do think he deserves to be happy, but I have been drowning in grief since I lost my mom and sister. Knowing he could try to replace his wife and daughter so soon after we lost them sucks. It hurts me, but he would see me as a brat if I told him this. I already expect people to say that when they read this. OP, you're not a brat. Not at all. Also, Ugh. such an overstepping for the dad to ask for your college money for Big this, time. This, you know, girl, he'd be banging. It's awful. Like, yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Is OP the a-hole? Not even in the slightest. And I'm I'm, I'm curious on, on everyone else's thoughts. And I know we've had a lot of people actually share about like this, you know, stepmother, step family dynamic. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments, especially if you've had semi semi similar interactions with your stepmother, sister, father, brother, etc. Um, but yeah, I don't think OP is the a-hole. In the slightest, the dad is a complete asshole for not just asking her, but pressuring her so consistently. The pressure is terrible. Yeah, I feel like I, I have a sneaking suspicion this is coming from the stepmom. But shout out to the grandparents for supporting OP. It sounds like OP is going to be able to have that money. Like, like the dad has no legal right. Yeah, it seems like he could only get that money if she gave it. Your parents.
Your parents. Not literally. Maybe the stepmom. On to the next story. Sam, uh, you know one thing I love about you? My bodacious bod. Yeah, you do have a bodacious bod that handles a lot of food. I'm trying to get thick. You're trying to get thick with three C's. You want that bodacious bod to get more bodacious. But I can't do that if I don't eat like a ton. I think today's sponsor could actually help you out, Sam. Who's that? It's HelloFresh. Just simply shop HelloFresh Market and take your pick from a curated selection of over 100 add-on items. That's a lot of food, Sam. It's amazing. And Sam, it doesn't just help your beautiful body. It also helps your wallet. I want my wallet to be thick along with me. That's right. I mean, it could be so much cheaper than takeout, even going in grocery shopping, you know, pushing a hot cart in a grocery store. Yeah, ew. Disgusting. Gross. Why do that when you could just have HelloFresh? HelloFresh is the best solution. It really is. Just choose your recipes and receive fresh, pre-portioned ingredients so you can get back to cooking. And Sam, it's already cheaper than takeout and groceries, but you know we got a big deal for our beautiful fans. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50OKOP and use code 50OKOP for 50% off plus free shipping. Guys, we're giving you the deals. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash 50OKOP. Use code 50OKOP and we'll give you 50% off plus free shipping. You gotta go with America's number one meal kit. Ow, ow! My parents stole my $4,000 tuition and gave it to my brother. I will never forgive them. Am I the a-hole? You look very concerned. I mean, stealing any kind of money is cause for concern. For a bit of context, around a year and a half ago when I was 15, I came up with a plan to pay for my own university fees once I finished school. Hey. Dang. Good looking, OP. I like it. It's a little expensive between the four to five figure range and my family isn't the richest. So yeah, I wish to save my parents the trouble of paying and do everything myself. I plan to save up enough money until I can invest in some cheap land back in my hometown and hopefully earn lots. 15 and thinking about investing like fantastic, fantastic. I told my parents this and they seemed pretty okay, at least to me with my plan. So I began working part time and I worked my socks off. So did I. So in those one and a half years, I saved up around $4,000 without spending a single penny. Dang, that dedication will uh, serve you well later in life. Now, here's where the problem began. My younger brother had his 13th birthday yesterday, and he had always wanted to have his own gaming PC set. My parents always told him that they couldn't afford it, which makes him sad. One day, I forgot to bring my wallet with me when I was going to school, which had my bank card in it. When I came back, I saw a new gaming PC sitting right in the middle of the living room. No. Oh. It was half unboxed and my brother was crying and jumping around in ecstasy. I was happy for him since I thought they actually managed to buy it themselves until I found out shortly after that almost half of my saved up money was gone. What kind of parents are you? That is disgusting. Are you kidding me? He worked one and a half years to save up money for education. And they spent half of it on a gaming PC. It sucks because like he's just trying to improve his life and his parents are not only not supporting him, but actively fucking over his future. And yes, we know all of each other's bank card passwords. Don't share your passwords with anyone. I was fuming and I lost it at my parents, demanding, why the F did you spend the money that I worked so hard for? My parents apologized, but noted that they just couldn't tell their son that they couldn't afford his dream set when there was money readily available. It's not ready available money. This is money for his future. That he earned. I screamed at them and said that they've just stolen 1,400 pounds right under my nose without even considering asking me and that they both owe me big time. My mom snapped back at me saying that I'm still a child belonging to them and that money should be the last thing on my mind at the moment. Huh, it's funny how it was on your mind when you stole it from me. It was a back and forth argument and I admit I used some colorful language there before my mom went on a power trip and yelled at me to remember who I'm talking back to. A thief? I stomped off in anger. Some of you Redditors may think that 1,300 pounds isn't a lot in the real world, but I've worked hard after school and on weekends to get this much and for it to be half gone in an instant is a heartbreak for me. But I think I regret some of the things I said to them, especially when all they were trying to do was make my brother happy. Am I the a-hole. No, not at all. I want to know what everyone else thinks, but they literally stole money from you. And I think that goes to show, do not share your bank account passwords. Not at all. With it, anyone. Yeah. That should be solely you. It's tough. It's tough though. Cause like the family, he probably had to, I don't know what the laws are like in the UK around getting a bank account, but I, I'm pretty sure you have to have like a, a guardian to get your bank account set up and they could. But you still, own, I, can the guardian take away your money? No, I don't. 
I don't know. That's a good question. Um, but well, I could easily see probably most parents like set up the password with their kid. I don't know. Oh, you change your passwords. That's, that's what you got to do. Yeah, that's it. That's what you got to do. Let's get to this next story. Boom. I knew my father was giving us no inheritance from his millions of dollars, but I didn't tell any of my siblings. Now they are pissed. So am I the asshole? What's up with all these rich families? Eat out the rich. Eat out the rich. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, if you eat the rich, you might not get their money. My father passed away a couple months ago. We knew it was coming and there was plenty of time to prepare for it. He had a long and successful career in his younger days. Five years ago, he sold his home to move into a very, very nice old folks home. I'll never know how much, but we can safely say he likely had at least a couple million. I mean, that's a lot. He loved his alma mater and was very involved in the volunteer alumni relations department in his retirement. A couple of years ago, he told me he planned to donate his entire estate to their alumni scholarship fund. He'd always been a generous man, so this didn't really shock me. I never really thought about it since. Interesting. I'll be generous to your kids. Yeah, I honestly like I've said in, in pretty recent episodes, what's the pros and cons of like giving inheritance to your children, but like giving it all to university. I don't know why that's coming off as such a asshole move. I don't know. Then when he passed all the funeral arrangements and whatnot, were already paid for, and he had a relatively small life insurance policy at that point just to ensure nobody would have expenses associated with his death. He had a longtime lawyer friend and CPA who then officially told me and my siblings about his will. As he told me, everything was gifted to the university fund. So I wasn't surprised, but I guess he never told my siblings this. They were very surprised wanted to challenge it. And when I said I already knew about it, they flipped. They asked some lawyers and supposedly they have no case. He was in sound mind when he made his will. So it's cut and dry. But my siblings are pissed at me saying when he told me I should have tried to convince him otherwise, told them so they could have tried to convince him otherwise too. We've gotten into it lately and I just feel like it's all unnecessary. Yeah. Our dad was always generous with us, paid for our schoolings, weddings, and all of the main parent things. I really don't care about having an inheritance because because we otherwise were always given everything we need. Was I being an ass by not telling them it really didn't even cross my mind? So this is where I get pissed off with the inheritance stuff because it's like, imagine the father was not well off and still provided, you know, a good a childhood. Maybe he wasn't able to pay for all of university. Maybe he wasn't able to pay for like a nice extravagant wedding, right? But gave you good love, gave you a good home, did all that good stuff. Would you be mad when you don't receive any inheritance from him? It's the same scenario both ways. You don't receive inheritance from the rich father and you don't receive inheritance from the not wealthy father. Yeah. But you are angry at the wealthy father yeah. for this. I mean, I don't you know what I'm think saying? the kids should be angry, but if it was me, I would donate the money to my kids. And, and it's not that the kids should get no money, but it's it's the perversing the memory of their father exactly. by expecting so like much. Expecting cash. Exactly. Yeah. The expectation kind of perverses the relationship, which is something that I think is not good. I agree. But um, do I hear about my date? <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. Let's get into it. Okay, so it was a friend, a friend's girlfriend's friend. Right. Is in Bali where we are for a month. And my friend was like, oh, you should meet up with her. And so she looked kind of cute on Instagram and like she seemed nice. And so we met up yesterday. Yep. And I was kind of going in with it with friend vibes anyway, because like Ashley, you know, you know, my Australian thoughty. Wow. Thoughty. Okay. But dude, she literally comes to the table and says, I love to lie. Is that not a red flag? Oh, it's totally a red flag. I didn't like it. She was like much more energetically reserved and like a little shy. Right. Okay. I need, I need a, a woman's thought process on what this means. This is Campbell. So I'm going on this date with this girl. It's kind of a day. It's like a friend introduction, like almost like a courtesy hangout, I think mutually. She asked me if like I want to go into the bathroom to like look at something. Um, interesting, right? Apparently there's something in the bathroom though. Like that's legitimately interesting to look at. Anyway, I make a joke about like, hey, you need to buy me a, a set of drinks before you can just be inviting me into bathrooms and place, right? So there's like this little bit of like undertone of sexuality. We go from that to another bar, play pool. We're playing pool. We play for the next round of drinks. She wins, she destroys me. And there's like a couple more like sexual jokes. It's like fun, but I'm not putting my 100% flirt on her. And then we go to one more 
four bar and we go to old man's which is like a like club and it's freaking popping and we go to the dance floor and she said she's wanted to dance and we get to the dance floor and then she is just either the worst dancer ever or wow. just can't that it refuses to dance. We went to the other dance floor and she just wasn't feeling it. And then we got like another set of drinks. I'm like, hey, like, you know, like, like, I'll, like I'll spin you around. Let's do some dancers together. And we do one and she's just not getting it. Um, and I'm just like, okay, maybe it's, but it's, it's kind of too loud to even talk. And she doesn't even, she doesn't want to talk to anyone new. And so I was just like, are you uncomfortable right now? <laughs> nice. Dude, that's how you know the date's going really well. And she's like, no, but I am like, I am a little tired. I'm like, okay, like, let's leave. We can like leave and then you can get like a grab home or something. I'm expecting that when we leave old man's, she's going to get a grab, which is like Uber immediately back. And she's like, how close is your villa from here? Uh Oh, how about your bathroom? I'm trying to see that. Yeah. So like, how would you interpret that? Interesting. I'm tired screams, I'm not going home with you. I'm tired to me says, mm, I'm done. I think it's curious that she's the one who's saying that she wanted to dance and then was like, never mind. She also started with that she loves a lot. We also might hang out with this person. So just so you know. Looking forward to meeting her. Just setting it up so well. I did hear her come in last night, so like I already knew the end of the story. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's all around weird. I also the invite into the bathroom. I think it was a joke. I, I we shouldn't re re read too much into it. No, however, usually you can just be like, you go look. You don't have to be like, come with me. Right. Also, it's like into the women's bathroom, I'm assuming. I have no idea. I don't know the bathroom setup. She's like, oh, like, is your villa close? And I'm like, yeah, it's a couple minute walk. You can order your grab from there, right? I is. Yeah. You can leave from there. And so we get there and she's not ordering her grab. And I'm like, so are you going to order? Your grab? <laughs> it's like a little awkward. I'm kind of done. I thought she was done. But then she's kind of looking at me and like still talking and she's like, oh yeah, I don't like, I don't think it's working and then puts her phone down. And then I'm like, don't worry, I'll pull in the address. I'll order it for you. Wow. <laughs> so like it was going well until old man's. Old man's, she gave me hard signals like, hey, I want this to be over. Mm -hmm. And I'm like down. As soon as we leave, I feel like I was getting signals that it was that she was like interested in again. And I was just confused. I think it's very important to remember that, like, even if you're only giving 70 percent of your riz, that is most people's 100 percent. I think that's crucial <laughs> to remember. <laughs> Flattering me. And then she sent me this this morning. Also, w while you're pulling that up, what if this was like her really like strange wave? I, I want to get back to the place faster. So instead of being, oh, hey, like, let's go check out your place let me just like shut down the vibe here so i can turn on the vibe there that actually well i that might because it's very weird but like but like isn't saying i'm tired i have work at, like in the morning that feels like a universal like very very I'm done with the day i would be like okay you know full it's a downer. you're being a downer yeah. i'm tired i want to go home i need to work i mean like i'm fine with that Okay, so she gets home, she texts you. Thank you for such a fun night. Not only did I love beating you at games, but bar hopping was a blast. Science say otherwise. <laughs> I'd love to show y'all some other spots soon. Cute, okay, I love a confirmation she's safe. That's great. We should try for sunset at La Brisa tomorrow. Cute. This could be taken in so many different ways. I mean, these are very normal friend texts. I think you're in friend category. I think you are safe. Sounds like is the right category for somebody who introduces themselves as a compulsive liar. <laughs> All right. Well, that has been a breakdown analysis of my, what, my meeting yesterday. <laughs> your meeting. Yes. Your consensual courtesy meeting. Yes. By the way, round of applause for, for Campbell for just Ow! beautifully dissecting that. Just jumping in. That's right. All right. We'll see you soon. Boop.